Hi everyone, welcome to day 345 of Project 365. So I have something that I really want to talk about because it really pissed me off. Um, in my German class, there is this guy who is one of those hardcore constitutionalists who essentially feels that we should take the constitution and uh, go directly by it word for word. Now, I, I kind of understand this perspective, but at the same time, the Constitution as it was originally ratified granted no rights to any individuals and blah blah blah. Anyway, one particular thing why the reason why this is so important is because he used it as a form of justification for why Prop 8 should have never been turned down. Um, and so I sort of did a double take and then got really upset and simply walked out because I knew one of two things would happen. One, I would cry, and oh, did I cry when I got back. And secondly, uh, I probably would have punched him. And he's an ex-veteran, and so that wouldn't have been smiled upon at all. So I, I, I tried to take the most calm and rational uh, uh, process and approach as possible. But now I really have to talk about this because I've been thinking about it and it's, I've been brooding and it is never good when I brood because then I become one very cranky motherfucker. So let's get this off my pe my chest, huh? Okay, so let's let's follow his logic. Let's just say that the Constitution should be followed word for word. Does that make it automatically okay? Because his whole thing is the fact that since the people voted for Prop 8 to pass, it should therefore be accepted and not go through the uh, Supreme Court, which is completely fucking stupid anyway, because the Supreme Court was put in place to check and see whether or not laws were constitutional. And when you bring it up to a court of appeals to bring it up to see whether or not it's constitutional, that is following the rules stated within the Constitution. So I don't see where the fuck he's getting this, but let's continue with this logic. Even let's say we were to follow the Constitution word for word and that we weren't supposed to actually use the appeals process as listed within the Constitution itself, uh, how does that make it okay that a group of people voted something and therefore they're allowed to oppress a group of individuals who should be granted a right? This is a simple right that should be granted to all individuals, no matter creed, race, color, or sexual orientation. And how is it okay for one group of people to oppress another? That is the one thing that bothers me. There is something inherently wrong with that, and if you don't see that, then you're a fucking bigot who obviously has no understanding of this whole thing we call living and social processes and social understanding and social forward thinking. Instead, you're this archaic motherfucker who should go die. Uh, quite frankly, because you have no place here in society because all you're doing is holding us back. And so this is the one thing that bothered me. Because his entire premise was, since people voted for it, it must be good, by default. Which is completely a ridiculous thing, because at some point, a group, a, a body of the government needs to step in and say, Hey, you guys... I, I know this is what you guys want, but this isn't necessarily the best thing for the country, or this isn't necessarily the best thing for individuals, because we do have, as human beings, individual rights, and these rights should be protected to, uh, these rights should be protected, and it's the government's job to protect these rights. So when a group of individuals is voting in a law that represses the rights of individuals, the government should be able to step in and say, hey, you know, you guys really shouldn't have been able to pass this. I don't even know how it got in the fucking docket. We're going to take this off. And sorry if you feel like your rights were violated, but you voting this law and violated the rights of others. So this, this guy just completely pissed me off. And then, and then, to top it all off, he had the fucking audacity to say that civil unions had the same amount of rights as marriage. Now, for those of you who are blissfully unaware of this lovely situation, uh, civil unions uh, have minus 1,400 rights compared to marriage. In other words, mar married couples have about 1,400 more rights than a couple that is within a civil union. Now, here is my almighty question that always seems to shut people the fuck up whenever they say something like, oh yeah, civil unions are like marriage. My question is this. If a civil union was like a marriage, 
Why don't you go get a civil union? Why must you go under this title of marriage? It isn't some religious right. Marriage stems, if memory serves, from Rome back before this whole Catholicism thing took over. It was, it was a legal right that was, that was done through the courts, not through the church. And so let's, let's, let's just say that fine. Marriage is a religious right. Uh, therefore, uh, if you're married, you shouldn't be getting legal, legal uh, compensation for it. Uh, so if you're going to call it re a religious right, then don't expect legal, legal rights for it when it's supposed to be something that's religious. Because there's that lovely thing, separation of church and state, marriage, should therefore have no real effect on what goes on legally with you. So uh, the, the entire thing really pissed me off. And it, it pissed me off so much that, I, like I said, I stormed out of the classroom, and then I sent an email to my teacher, and then when I got back to my dorm, I slowly broke down, and then this is me building myself back up with some justified anger. Uh, so my question for you guys is, have you ever been so upset that you just had to leave before doing something that you might regret? Um, and yeah, so this is going to be completely unedited, so you get to hear me fuck up. And, and, and misspeak a lot. Uh, anyway, that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye.